Thank you again, everyone, for joining us this afternoon. My name is Sam Myers. Today, we will be discussing a simple approach to meeting dissolved oxygen requirements at wastewater treatment plants. So, oxygen is naturally represented in the environment. It's represented 21% by volume of the atmosphere, 45% by weight of the Earth's rocks, and 89% by weight of the Earth's water. What is this telling us? Basically, it's telling us that oxygen is everywhere, there's a lot of it, and also uh, it is a critical design parameter for Mother Nature. Oxygen in the aquatic environment. It is presented as dissolved molecular oxygen, or DO, and aquatic animals and plants depend on DO in the water for survival. This can seem to be an obvious statement, however, it is, it is fairly easy to forget that oxygen is necessary for life on Earth. So let's talk about general DO criteria. The minimum DO requirement for aquatic life at any stage of life is 2 milligrams per liter. There is a minimum of 5 milligrams per liter, which is necessary for survival population as a whole, and most wastewater treatment plants have a requirement of six or seven milligrams per liter for permitting. So basically this states that different aquatic life has different dissolved oxygen requirements. Fish begin leaving areas in the two to three parts per million dissolved oxygen level. Even though there is a minimum DO requirement for aquatic life at any stage of life, at two milligrams per liter, carp somehow only require mil one milligram per liter. We have seen several requirements out there calling for DO effluent requirements as high as 7 to 8 milligram per liter, and that is typically due to the effluent falling into a trout stream. So, what affects DO in the water? Water temperature. When water is warm or hot, um, it is very tough on the DO and the fish that uh, are living in that water. The degree of turbulence can affect the degree of penetration in the water. Um, the degree of penetration um, is the sun's effect on the water. Um, also, atmospheric pressure can affect the DO concentrations. At higher altitudes and colder weather climates, um, it will help the DO remain in the water for a longer period of time. Dissolved or suspended solids will affect the DO decay of organisms and organic matter. Excessive amounts of organic matter such as manure or leaves will decrease the DO. Respiration by living organisms, DO will be decreased with heavy plant growth. And finally, the rate of photosynthesis. Saturation point for DO. So scientists have determined that saturation DO levels, um, it varies uh, temperatures which can be seen here. So, as you can see from this slide here, at a zero degree Celsius, the saturation point for DO is approximately 15 milligrams per liter. So, basically what this is stating here is that it, as temperatures decrease, the DO saturation increases rather significantly. So, moving this way. Here you can see a saturation chart showing the solubility of oxygen in water. An example you could see here at uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit the solubility of DO will be 11.25 milligrams per liter and at 75 degrees Fahrenheit you will have an 8.47 milligram per liter DO saturation point. So this is showing that permits in warmer climates physically cannot be as high as they are in colder climates because of that saturation limit. So what does all of this mean for wastewater treatment plants? I'll start with a brief historical overview. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency began controlling pollution by preventing waste discharge and reducing floating debris in bodies of water. Initially, you know, this was not a concern. However, in the early 1900s, there were free, frequent fish kills typically from low dissolved oxygen levels in bodies of water. So now that that has occurred, the EPA and, and certain state agencies consider water a major public concern 
where oxygen is recognized as key element and is necessary to support aquatic life. So the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, or NPDES, guidelines were implemented and wastewater treatment plant outfall permits were established. So the NPDES permits, typically we see an outfall DO requirement, as stated earlier, from six to seven milligrams per liter. Um, and that is an average we've seen lower and we've seen higher. And the outfall BOD, typically we see as less than five milligrams per liter. And the total suspended solids at as less than three milligrams per liter. Again, typical, these can vary state to state. So some solutions to this dissolved oxygen problem. Several methods for increasing DO at wastewater treatment plants include mechanical aerators, traditional step-down cascade aerators, vertical tray-style cascade aerators, diffusers, and low-profile cascade aerator. So when you're picking one of the above pieces of equipment, some design considerations to take into consideration on making a choice should include the power demand from the equipment, the elevation or depth provided at that plant, the footprint or real estate provided at that plant, the maintenance requirement for the plant operators, as well as the life expectancy desired. So some of the solutions, the mechanical aerator, your traditional mechanical aerator style, some of the pros for this piece of equipment would include its traditional nature. It is an established piece of equipment and is well known, been used for a long time. Uh, however, some of the cons to this mechanical aerator would include the demand for power that it calls for, as well as a deeper water depth requirement, potential inefficient aeration, and it'll have difficult access for maintenance, as well as a potential high replacement cost. On the left here, you can see the vertical tray style cascade aerator. Uh, potential pro for this would be its smaller footprint. However, some of the cons would include, again, a pump required, which is dollars flying out the door, um, as well as difficult access for maintenance. On the right, you can see your traditional step-down cascade aerator. Some pros for this product would be the that there is no power required. It is simple and has fairly low maintenance. However, some of the cons would include the requirement for a significant elevation drop um, and the large footprint it would call for. And most importantly, that it would not guarantee a DO effluent should there be a DO effluent requirement, the outfall of this. So a unique solution for this DO problem, the low profile cascade aerator, which you can see here. Low profile cascade aerator has several advantages to include that there is no power requirement for the piece of equipment. It is static in nature. We do guarantee a DO effluent. The low profile nature calls for just two feet of fall from beginning to end of the LPCA. There are no moving parts for the equipment and it is constructed completely out of stainless steel. You can expect an extremely long life cycle of the equipment, 25 years plus easy, and it is easy for our contractor friends uh, and the installation simply inserted into a basin and bolted in. So the low profile cascade aerator can be found at the outfall of wastewater treatment plants. Again, we guarantee an increase in DO from zero to six milligrams per liter across 24 feet of length. Um, and over that 24 feet of length, only two feet of fall from the beginning to the end of the LPCA. The peak flow flowing through the LPCA will drive the width of the LPCA, which drives the width of that basin and the concrete. The DO effluent requirement will be met uh, across the full range of daily flow. So if it calls for a 6 MGD flow, we will size it accordingly, but it will still achieve the effluent DO requirement 
at 2 MGD. The LPCA can be inserted into new and existing wastewater treatment plants. So we've had extensive lab studies performed on the equipment, which you can see here. We had tests done at Mississippi State University for an LPCA with a 100 gallon per minute flow through it. And basically what these test results showed us were that the DO increased on average a quarter milligram per liter per foot of length which is how we came about the 24 feet for six milligrams per liter. However, if you remember um, discussed earlier that saturation is not linear. So 28 feet, a 28 foot LPCA will not necessarily increase the DO to seven milligrams per liter. There will be other variables that will have to be considered. So again, here you can see the inlet, the influent DO reading, the effluent DO reading, and the average increase per foot here. And again, this testing, we would be happy to share with any of you out there. So here, what you can see is the influent flow control gates here, trapezoidal in shape. They're at the influent of the LPCA. You would have an influent chamber here. And as the water rises, it is navigated or directed into the perspective channel for the maximum oxygen transfer for that respective flow rate. So in here you can see our trapezoidal shaped finger weirs. So these trapezoidal designs allow for maximum oxygen transfer and performance at minimum flow rates and across the full range of daily flow. So H is the water level on each finger weir as flow is directed to channels of choice via the influent flow control gate at the respective flow rate, H is optimized in each channel between two and five inches. The trapezoidal design again offers a greater H at lower flow rates. So in just two feet of fall with a floor slope of just four and a half to five and a half degrees, the LPCA accomplishes what in nature would be a waterfall. Turbulence causes the entrapped air to be absorbed into the liquid as oxygen. Turbulence controls aeration baffles fitted with air infusion plates incrementally spaced along each channel, optimizes the turbulent reactions of hydraulic jumps created by the baffles. The air infusion plates mounted on top of the baffles, which look like vertical fingers if you will, form air tubes from the atmospheric surface down to the crest of the baffles. Pressure differentials cause the air to run the crest of the baffles and disperse in the form of fine bubbles into the liquid, which can be seen here. The turbulence you see here is submerged. That's the infused air that has been sucked into the flow and channeled horizontally across the top of the baffles. The refined small air bubbles and mixing are created through controlled application of velocity, pressure differentials, baffles, air infusion plates, baffle spacing, baffle height, channel depth, and optimum controlled head over the baffle, resulting in six milligrams per liter effluent DO concentration at any flow rate that the LPCA is designed for and below. So we have been talking about our insert style LPCA. In addition to that, for our lower flow rate applications, we have a freestanding unit that can be designed for typically up to one MGD applications. It can be installed at grade or flush with grade, um, depending on the situation. So here we have some real life results from some installations we have across the country. Here you can see at a 7 MGD plant in Illinois with approximately 50 degree water temperature. You can see the DO ends here and the DO outs here, which have a typical or average rise of over six milligrams per liter. So here you can see a few more installations we have. These so happen to be in the Southeast Mississippi, 
Tennessee and Alabama, all with the DO out on average of over nine milligrams per liter. And you can see these, uh, the water temperatures. Again, we have a good bit of data on installations across the country and would be happy to share these results with anybody who is interested. So finally, some implications in a, in a summary. In recap, we can expect the DO effluent requirements to remain in effect. And with that, we can expect the DO requirements that they will likely increase as the state regulations become more strict. There are several options available out there. Each have their own pros and cons. So, and do not forget when you are making a consideration for a piece of equipment to increase your DO, keep in mind these design requirements, what your power demand will be, the elevation and depth provided, the footprint and real estate provided, the maintenance requirements you would be looking for, and the expected life expectancy. The low profile cascade aerator, a simple approach, a simple solution.